Hello and welcome to section two, getting started with Redshift. Let's start with video one, launching a Redshift data warehouse on the AWS console. So we've had a whole section of theory, enough of that. Let's get started, let's get hands on. So prerequisites, you're going to need a working AWS account with sufficient permissions on that account to launch Redshift resources, modify security groups and modify IAM policies. If you haven't done this before on your account, it will be covered by the AWS free tier. Amazon will give you two free months using the DC2.large node type, which is what we're going to be using at least for now. You'll obviously need to be able to log in to the AWS console and not in this video, but going forward, I'm assuming you're going to be able to connect to resources that are accessible over the internet on TCP port 5439. That's the port that you use to connect to Redshift via JDBC and optionally, if you want to actually work through the examples, you're going to need some kind of JDBC query tool that can connect to Redshift. I would recommend DataGrip. That's what I'm going to be using for these videos and for this course. Uh, DataGrip is from JetBrains, the same company that makes PyCharm, CLion, IntelliJ, and, and other IDEs like that. It's a really good tool. If you've used any of those before, you'll see that the interface is just the same and it's very, very easy to use. So with that being said, let's go and get started, get into the hands-on stuff. So you can see I'm signed into the AWS console here. You'll notice that I'm in the island region. Everything that we do in this course, we're going to use E West one, which is island. And for this video, we're just going to look at how easy it is actually to launch a Redshift cluster and get started. And then we're going to tear it down again. So to get started, click on services at the top here and just start by typing Redshift in and you'll see that it pops up here and just going to click on that. And you'll be greeted with this launch page if you haven't already launched a cluster before. You might even be launched, greeted with a splash page that shows you a little bit about Redshift. But all we need to right now is this quick launch cluster button, the blue button here. So we're going to click that. We get to choose our node type. So node type is a little bit like the EC2 instance type that your Redshift cluster is going to use. And this specifies or lets you choose the specification of the node that you want to be part of your cluster. So the DC2.large node has two cores, 15 gig of RAM, and 160 gigabyte SSD. So you can see that here. But there are several other types that are available as well. So Amazon also offer a DC2.8x large node. So that's got eight times as much CPU and memory capacity as the normal large node. So what DC means here is dense compute. So that means there's a high ratio of compute to storage. Now, if you've got a lot of data you need to store and you're less worried about query performance, you have the option to select a dense storage node. So that's what DS means. So dense storage 2.x large, that will give you two terabytes of storage, but proportionally less compute and memory per unit of storage. Now the free tier only supports DC 2.large, so we're going to select that. We're going to say we want a two node cluster. We're just going to call it Redshift Cluster 1. We're going to set the password as password 123 with an exclamation mark. Obviously you can set anything you want. And you can see here it's telling us that doesn't meet the minimum password requirement. So I'm just going to capitalize the P. Database port we're going to leave as 5439. And then we just click launch. And that's it. Amazon's now going to go and create our cluster for us. Now, what you can do, you can sit here and wait for this to launch if you like. Once this is launched, there's a, a new feature of the Redshift AWS console now. You can actually launch queries directly against the cluster from the console. So you can click on query editor here. And now it's going to say we don't have any supported clusters because our cluster is not up. But what we can do is we can wait for that cluster to become available and we can query it directly. So I'm just going to pause the video while we wait for this to create. It'll probably take about five minutes. Once it's done, we can have a go with the query editor. Okay, so my cluster is now showing as available. I've just been hitting this refresh button here and you should see this green status to say it's available. Expanding this, allows you to see what the endpoint is that you connect to if you're connecting over the internet and a bunch of other things about the database as well. But we're just gonna go and have a look at the query editor. So click query editor over here and you're going to select obviously the only cluster that you have available. And then we just type our credentials in. So database, I think should be optional. Database user will be AWS user and the password was whatever you set. And we're just going to click connect. The default database is just dev and click connect. And we're in. So we can see it's created a default schema for us. 
We've got the, the built-in schemas as well, which we can then obviously refresh. We can see a list of default tables here as well, and we have the option to run queries and DDL over here. So that's everything I wanted to show you. Let's just make sure that we clean up after ourselves. So I am going to delete this cluster. So click on the cluster drop down and click on delete cluster. It's going to ask you if you want to create a backup snapshot of the cluster. We don't because we haven't got anything in there that we care about. And just click that you acknowledge you're going to delete this cluster and hit delete. And this will sit on deleting for some time and eventually will drop off.